Director of Photography, Alec Watson, and welcome back to the second part of our two-part video where we looked at different ways of image separation. We took this image here in our last lesson. I really liked this image of this bird. Uh, this is not my image, somebody else took this image, but I wasn't loving the color on it. So we used AI to separate the subject and make colors that I thought were more pleasing or, or, or fit this better. One of the things that I commented on in the last video was I didn't love how sharp the background was and that I would show a different way to fix this in the edit suite. So this is what that video is all about. Let's take this image this time and bring it into the edit suite. We're still gonna use some AI masking, but what I wanna do is create a depth of field for separation. Now, I mean, would I prefer to do that in camera? Absolutely, but sometimes we don't have the right lens or we're using a wide angle lens on a shot and we wanna separate a subject somehow. And th there are you know, AI ways to do this and computer ways. What I wanted to do was show you my way, which is a little mixture of both which works basically 100% of the time because sometimes AI gets it right and sometimes it gets it wrong. Now, anytime I'm in the edit suite, we work in layers here, I always, always want to duplicate my layer because I wanna be able to go back to an original layer. There's always a reason to do that. In fact, I'm just gonna go right ahead and go with two backup plans and we'll talk about why in a second, it'll, be, it'll become evident. Now what I wanna do on my top layer is I want to separate our bird from our background because if I wanna blur the background, I want the bird on its own layer. So the easiest way, the smartest way to do that is to select subject. But as we found in the last video on the develop suite, for whatever reason, the AI that is normally really, really good, and it's one of the reasons that I picked this image, is not getting this one right. And that does happen every once in a while because you know AI is just guessing at what you're doing. It doesn't see things the way we do. It's missed this wing. And for whatever reason, it selected this window, this piece of the wall, and this window over here. So I wanna make sure I get this wing. To do that, we're gonna go over way up to the left. I'm gonna go with the lasso. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and draw around this wing as accurately as I can. I've got our bird and its wing selected. I can see I haven't done it exactly right, but we have a way of fixing that up. First off, what I wanna do is I wanna create that mask. The mask means I, I, I basically, I wanna cut this out, but I, I don't wanna cut it out permanently. So masking is the way to do that. And that's using this little icon down here, add layer mask. And what you'll see is kind of a, a black version of, of our image over here. Nothing seemed to change, but if I turn off our other layers, boom, there we go. We can see what has been masked from that layer. And this other stuff, I don't want. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and hit D, and that deselects. So now these are just sitting on our layer. And I'm gonna take a paintbrush. If I paint black, on to our mask, it turns into an eraser. So again, I could switch this to white and things will appear. I can switch my brush to black and things disappear. There we go, so I can erase out all our background. And it's not erased, it's, it's basically hidden. From here, I'm gonna take our zoom tool and I'm gonna zoom into, zoom into 150%. So we can really look at this bird. In fact, let's go bigger than that. Let's go 200%. And what we can see is on the top edge of the wing, there's a little bit of background and there, I've kind of missed some of the wing here. So I can just paint that again. So we know from looking at our mask that masking things in black makes them disappear and switching to white makes things reappear. So if I take that and make a really small brush, there we go, smaller than that even. Let's take our brush way down. There we go. And I can just start brushing in the rest of the missing wing. If you need to, if you need to move things, you hold down the, the space bar, it'll give you this little hand and then you can move things around. There we go, 
sometimes it's just easier to type in. So I'm gonna use a brush size of, let's go in there and hit 20. There we go, that gives a brush of 20. If I want to clean, so I'm gonna clean up this wing. So if I, I want to erase, so I'm gonna use a black brush. We'll switch this around to black. There we go, and just above the wing, I'm just going to brush out those little bits of wrong color. We'll do the same down here. There we go. And then we'll switch that around to white again and just finish off brushing in the wing here. There we go. Our bird is now completely on its own layer. So we could turn that layer on and off there and we could rename this layer. We'll call it bird. It's super original, Alec. Well done. If I turn the layer on behind it, we'll zoom out all the way. On our top layer, we have a bird. On our next layer down, we have the image itself. So I'm gonna take this image and I am going to blur that image. When I blur something, I'm always looking for the most distant thing to make sure that that's blurred the right amount. So what I mean is the sky is the furthest away. Do I like the way the clouds are blurred? And I would say yes. So I, could, I mean, I could, I could add more blur up here. Right now it's at eight. We don't know what that means, but that's clearly too much. Uh, a three is probably gonna end up being too little, but it, it's surprising how little blur actually looks right. Actually, even three is okay. Um, I'm gonna go a little heavier handed because you can always back it off later. So I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stick with that eight. I'll click done on this, and then it's gonna do a higher resolution version. Now it's going to create kind of a, uh, a pretty accurate lens blur. Now this lens blur has no actual depth of field. There's no uh, image depth in there. So I'm gonna show you my technique for uh, doing it pretty good. And like I said, this works like 100% of the time. When this pops back, we have a completely blurred layer. So here's what we've got. We have a bottom layer that's all in sharp focus where most of the stuff is too sharp. Our next layer up, we have a blur layer where everything's too blurry. And on top of that, we have a sharp bird. Now this kind of works, but as we can see, there's a halo around the bird. We're gonna take care of that. And everything's too blurry. So we're gonna create a layer mask on our blur layer. And I'm going to go through and selectively paint through. So if, I, if our layer mask is currently white, which means nothing's getting masked, I'm going to paint through black, which is going to cut through that mask to the layer below, which, as you remember, is our sharp layer. So I want this, I want the stuff that's closest to this bird in a lot better focus. So I'm going to, I, I'm going to take this area here. I've got about the right size brush. I'm going to take my opacity back to 20. And one of the things with this technique, you don't want to lift your brush. If, if I, I want this whole plane in focus without lifting my brush, I'm gonna use a black brush and I'm gonna paint over it in black. And we can see that I just pulled through some of that background. It should be a little sharper, so we do another pass. And up at this end, it should be a little sharper still than back there, there we go. That's pretty good. Now we did about three passes on there. So on an area that's soft, we can do one pass. So I'll do one pass on this whole area to bring that through. There we go. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna do another pass. There we go. This area should be a little more in focus. So let's go one pass over this whole area. It seems like it's still a little bit too soft. We will do another pass. There we go. And then I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a bigger brush. There we go. And I'm gonna go once over here. And one more time. And if we look at our depth, uh, this is kind of an artificial depth map we've got kind of our building in different levels of gray. So if I wanna pull something all the way through, it would be totally black. There we go. Now, I mentioned that the bird seems like it's got a halo around it. Let's go in and fix that. So we're zooming in a little more. We're gonna use a small, small brush. 
and we're just going to paint around our bird. But this time we're going to take our opacity way up to 100 because we want to totally paint our bird through so that halo doesn't exist around our bird. And if sometimes you'll get something that's a little too sharp, but most of the time this is just going to work great. There we go. And make that brush a little bit smaller for the end of the wing. There we go over the wing and bang. Let's pull back to a one to one. There we go, artificial depth of field that kind of works the way my eye would believe that, where our bird's in sharp focus, our, our bird's on the top layer, our next layer down is our blur layer, and on the bottom is our sharp layer. Now one of the reasons that I love working in the edit suite to do this is I could take our blur layer and I can change the opacity. So I could take it all the way down to 0% opacity and go, okay, that's basically the original because it's turning off this layer, and I can roll in the amount of blur that I want, and it's kind of got the right depth map till my eye says, you know what? It actually looks best about right there. I use this technique uh, a lot on a keeper image because sometimes, well, well, very often, when I'm shooting and reacting to something, this wasn't my photo, but it easily could have been where I took something in a moment and it's just like, oh, my Christmas wish list would have been more separation. Well, we can edit in uh, and, and separate by color and we can do an artificial depth of field uh, with a combination of AI and our own visual experience. And, and generally, our own visual experience is often going to beat AI, at least at this point. So this is a technique I use all the time. That's it for episode nine. In episode 10, I'm moving on to how you can work with actions so you can start to streamline some stuff in the edit suite. I hope to see you there. Yeah.